All right, what's happening? Y'all, your boy Rico from Street Scores, and I think it's time to take a look at the commander's recent history with draft picks, especially since 2015. I'm going to go back to the Brandon Sheriff draft. We're going to look all the way up to the most recent draft with Jahan Dotson, and we're going to go each round for all of the years. So we're going to look at all of our first round picks since 2015. We're going to look at all of our second round picks since 2015, and so on and so forth, and we're going to grade each round to see how well we do. And I mean, I mean, is it to the point that we just need to trade out of the second round we either need to trade up into the first or just take that second round pick and turn it into some more third fourths and fifths we're gonna take a look again at all of the players that we drafted and you may be surprised with some of these grades and we're gonna go based on good meh and bad man's kind of mixed kind of like a mid good and bad sometimes on or off of course good is good and then know that we do have a couple of bad rounds but there is one round that i would consider great technically on this scale and we're only doing good man bad but there's one round that i just gotta say is a little bit better than good where it's like our little sweet spot but before we dive into all of that make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get notification immediately and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one make sure you pull up for all of the draft coverage again i'm live streaming the entire draft process at the very least rounds one through five and i'm also starting the streams early so the draft starts at 8 p.m on thursday i'm starting the stream at 6 30 we'll be doing mock drafts together i'll open up the phone lines for y'all to call in we're going to talk everything draft who our predictions are for the 16th overall pick and everything then i'll be live streaming rounds two and three on friday starting an hour early as well on that day and also i will probably live stream rounds four and five at least on saturday so make sure you stay tuned pull up all of that without further ado let's get it All right, so let's start with the first round. So in 2015, we drafted Brandon Sheriff. In 2016, we drafted wide receiver Josh Doxon. In 2017, we drafted Jonathan Allen. In 2018, we drafted Deron Payne. In 2019, Montez Sweat and Dwayne Haskins. And then 2020, Chase Young. And then 2021, Jamin Davis. And then 2022, Jahan Dodson. This one is a mix. Jahan Dodson... 16th overall is already really good but the fact that we originally had a pick higher than that and then traded back the 16th overall and because of that trade back also having to throw in our sixth round pick we ended up with the picks then we ended up taking brian robinson technically our starting running back sam howell technically our starting quarterback cole turner who when healthy you should be able to contribute a lot we were able to take all of those guys just simply because we traded back and still at the end of the day we traded back in the first round and was still able to get Jahan Dotson who was arguably the best rookie receiver last year if he would have just stayed healthy if we're talking about on a per game basis he was doing the most work him and Stephon Diggs were literally leading the NBA in touchdown receptions out of all positions receiver tight end running back until he got hurt and it just seemed like Carson Wentz fell off a cliff after Jahan Dotson basically got hurt and then of course Jamin Davis you know it's still kind of a we'll see there 2021 not exactly later enough in time for us to really judge that pick but it definitely still seems like a pretty big reach at 19 but I think he's gonna end up being a good player will he ever live up to a first round pick not exactly sure wouldn't bet my life savings on it but I think Jamin Davis is gonna end up being a pretty good player for us but again first round wise 19th overall not sure then of course Chase Young we thought number two overall that was gonna be one of the safest picks you can make it hasn't exactly worked out like that so that's kind of like a negative grade so far Chase Young still has a lot of potential to go I mean we still have time Chase Young can end up turning it out to be the player that was worthy of that second overall pick so we'll see but as of right now not exactly worth it especially because he was hurt and even before he got hurt he wasn't very good and then even after returning from getting hurt this past season he still didn't develop any pass rush moves or anything like that barely any technique at all great edge setter very underrated run stopper but as far as getting to the quarterback is just not there yet then Dwayne Haskins of course a bad pick RP to him and not even just his fault but you could just tell even before they came out and said that Dan Snyder called 
called that pick in himself from a yacht. Nobody else wanted to draft him. Jay Gruden, nobody. Kevin O'Connell, literally Dan Snyder forced that pick. And I think it's probably because Dwayne Haskins, he's familiar with the Dan Snyder family all the way back in like high school or something like that. So that's why that pick got forced. And again, I don't necessarily just blame Dwayne Haskins. You can blame some of it on him, but you can also tell that he wasn't a great fit for this team. You could tell that Jay Gruden and all of those guys didn't really want him and didn't exactly know what to do with them to get the most out of them. So that was just a bad pick, plain and simple, top to bottom. Then Montez Sweat, 26th overall. That's an excellent pick. A lot of people thought he may potentially go top five, top 10 in that draft, but then it was the heart issues, I believe. Jonathan Allen was the arthritis issues or whatever that came out right before the draft. Montez Sweat had some supposed heart issues that clearly have not bothered him at all. We should not have been able to get him at 26. And the fact that we were aggressive enough to trade back up into the first to get him. We didn't have a 26th overall pick in that draft, entering that draft. When Montez Sweat started to slide, we were like, boy, we got to put together some second round picks to trade up and get him. I feel like that was a great move. We got to figure out who we're going to pay between him and Chase Young. It would be lovely if we could pay both. But either way, Montez Sweat at 26th overall was a good pick. Deron Payne, 13th overall. I mean, nothing less to be said. The way that we paid him, you can already tell that was a great pick. Jonathan Allen in 2017, great pick, 17th overall. Just like Montez Sweat was not supposed to get him that late. Jonathan Allen was arguably the best defensive player in college football, like Jalen Carter level, before he came out. But then the arthritis issues, and then after he had a disappointing rookie season and not a, a much better sophomore season, you know, his hype kind of died down. People kind of forgot how great he was in college. And now he's balling out and going to Pro Bowls and should be getting all Pro votes and things like that. People kind of forget that, you know, his momentum kind of died down in between, but he's starting to really reach what we thought he'd be coming out of Alabama. And then, of course, Josh Doxson, terrible pick, 22nd overall. I mean, the way he performed for us, he wasn't even worthy of a seventh round pick. And then Brandon Sheriff was an excellent pick at five overall. I remember being upset watching that draft live because I really wanted Leonard Williams. I was like, if Leonard Williams falls to us at fifth overall, we got to take him. And then we didn't. We took Brandon Sheriff. I was pretty upset about that, but it ended up working out pretty well in the long run because we ended up getting Brandon Sheriff in 2015. And then to get the defensive tackle that I wanted, we got Jonathan Allen one year, Devron Payne the next, Montez Sweat the next, and then Chase Young after that. So we weren't playing with defensive line after that and even though we kept having the franchise tag brandon sheriff and he ended up leaving before we can give him a long-term contract that was still a really good pick i mean if you just look at the statistics of how many games we won and lost with him in the game versus how many we won and lost with them out the game that should tell you everything you need to know about that first round selection again a mixed group there's some greats and there's some really bads i'm gonna give it a mix i'm leaning towards good but it's more of a mix then the second round you have preston smith that's pretty good that's all right that's pretty good sua cravens terrible <laughs> ryan anderson not good darius guys terrible situation so much talent so much talent we were so hyped about that but it just didn't work out we didn't have a second round pick in 2019 because again we had to give that up and in the next years in 2020 to be able to move up to get Montez Sweat in 2019. Going to 2020 again, we didn't have one because of the Montez Sweat trade up the previous draft the year before. Then Samuel Cosme in 2021. And I still believe in Samuel Cosme, but at the same time, he hasn't exactly proven to be a second round pick yet. But I think he has all pro potential, especially once he focuses on only being a guard and that's it. And then for Darian Mathis, man, he looked like he was going to be the truth. I was disappointed when we took him in the draft, but then throughout the all season in the preseason he looked like okay second round pick for him may have actually been a steal even but then he got hurt before we could really see him do anything in the regular season so there's still a mystery there so i'm gonna go with bad for two because for darian mathis we still have a question mark samuel cosme we have a question mark didn't have second round picks in 2020 or 2019 and then you have darius geist ryan anderson and sua cravens and then preston smith who's pretty good but it's not enough to balance out all of the other bad so number two we're gonna go bad so far first round mixed second round bad now let's go to the third round and this is where we kill it i mean spoiler alert matt jones in the third round 2015 it didn't work out to be as great as we hoped, but there were flashes. And then Kendall Fuller in 2016, that was huge. Ended up trading them away to get Alex Smith, but he ended up coming back, so it worked out. Fabian Moreau in the third round in 2017, I still feel like he had so much potential and so much talent. Didn't work out, so not a great pick, though. Third round in 2018, Jerron Christian, that was even worse than the Fabian Moreau pick, easily. Then Terry McLaurin in 2019, this is where the streak starts. Then in 2020, Antonio Gibson. Then 2021, Benjamin St. Juice, and I 
I still believe in De'Ami Brown's talent. We'll see how he works out. And then 2022, Brian Robinson. So I'm going to go great here. I'm definitely going to go great. Even though Jerron Christian is terrible, Fabian Moreau was kind of bad, but not bad enough to cancel out all of the greatness that we found in the third round otherwise because these are first round players at least production wise and talent wise that they've shown at the NFL level that we were getting in the third round so of course when you're grading these rounds you gotta kinda take into account that you know this is a first round pick there's higher expectations than a third round pick so that's definitely being included in my grades for sure I mean just logically you're supposed to so the third round we killed it technically a good grade but I'm just gonna go ahead and stretch it out and say great because that's our best round since 2015 by far then fourth round 2015 we got Jamison Crowder that's pretty good that's actually a sleeper pick right there for the fourth round Eric Kwanjo didn't work out very well so that's technically a bad pick but it's like how mad can you be at fourth round picks then we didn't have one in 2016 then 2017 we got Samaj P Ryan and Monte Nicholson Samaj P Ryan has worked out better for other teams than he worked for us and I'll never forgive him for that Saints game I never will we were supposed to beat the Saints Monte Nicholson had talent but it just ended up not working out then you got Trey Apke in the fourth round that was a reach just because of his combine testing we took a chance on Bryce Love one of the most talented running backs in college football history I've ever seen but he was coming off of a terrible injury so it was like we really shouldn't expect much anyway I can't be too mad at us taking a chance on a guy with that much talent in the fourth round it didn't work out at all but I'm not mad at that but then Wes Martin in the fourth round I am mad at that that didn't work out at all then fourth round Sadiq Charles he's sticking around and he had first round talent but it hasn't been working out Antonio Gandy Golden in the fourth round did not work out one single bit then fourth round in 2021 John Bates not bad that's pretty decent and then 2022 this past draft fourth round Percy Butler I'm very excited about his potential i can't necessarily give it a grade yet but it's more of like a question mark but i think percy butler is going to ball out especially if he continues building on what he did in that final game against the cowboys a lot of our young guns stepped up big time against the cowboys in that final game of the season he was one of them but yeah man so the fourth round i'm gonna give it bad i gotta give it bad there's too much bad in here even though there's some potential and some decent in here a little bit of good but there's too much bad outweighing the rest so fourth round i'm gonna have to go bad then let's go back to 2015 fifth round you have martrell spate which i mean fifth round pick how harsh can i be but that wasn't great then 2016 mad ionitis great pick in the fifth round excellent pick then in the fifth round of 2017 jeremy greasy hands sprinkle boy did not work out not a good pick but then in 2018 tim settle still of the draft arguably then 2019 ross piercebacher didn't really work out i forgot about that name but cole holcomb in the fifth round was a steal as well then 2020 Khalid hudson we'll see keith ishmael didn't work out at all for us so but 2021 Derek forrest whoo we that's looking like a still right now and then the fifth round of this past draft i still believe in cole turner's talent i think he's going to be a dominant red zone threat and he was killing it in training camp against i mean ultimately what ended up being a top five top 10 defense in the nfl and a lot of different metrics so cole turner i believe in his talent i don't think that was a fluke in training camp he just got to get healthy and continue to develop and then our potential franchise quarterback this upcoming season sam howe was taken in the fifth round you got to remember that and if he balls out that's arguably one of the biggest steals that we've had as a commander's team washington football team redskins whatever since 2015 by far you can argue easily you get a franchise quarterback in the fifth round that's our biggest steal so for the fifth round i'm gonna say good there were a lot of sleepers a lot of steals again even the ones that turn out bad it's like how upset can you be with them being fifth round picks but at the same time even ignoring grading on a certain scale grading on a certain curve that fifth round is pretty good we got some good players out of that so i'm gonna give that good not as good as the third round but still good then sixth round going all the way back to 2015 we had three sixth round picks we had Keyshawn jarrett tevin mitchell and evan spencer I don't even exactly remember what happened with those guys then you have nate sudfeld the quarterback that didn't work out then you got robert davis the wide receiver that didn't work out but chase really a technically our starting center a top five center in the nfl went healthy so 
that's like technically a still in the draft a great pick but he just can't stay healthy so i can't give it too much credit then sixth round y'all remember i used to believe in sean Deion hamilton's potential and he used to flash occasionally but it didn't work out so not a great pick kelvin Harmon. i'm still in the boat that i feel like kelvin Harmon could have found a way to make it work if we just continue to develop him i feel like him under eric b enemy we would have figured something out but it is what it is technically a bad pick in a way and then 2020 we didn't have a sixth round pick 2021 we got cameron cheeseman our starting long snapper can't be too mad at that you would prefer to take a long snapper as an attractive agent or in the seventh round but if you got to do what you got to do in the sixth round it is what it is i remember there was a run on long snapper so we kind of had to hurry up and take one we kind of panicked a little bit because i believe the long snapper we really wanted another team took them like a few picks before so we were like all right so if long snappers are going now i guess we got to go ahead and get ours it's kind of that same pressure you feel when you're doing fantasy drafts and then that one guy is always that one guy that takes quarterback way sooner than you should take quarterback in fantasy drafts it was kind of the same thing with long snappers for the commanders in real life and then 2022 we didn't have a sixth round pick again we had to include that sixth round pick along with our original first round pick to trade back to get Jahan Dotson and gain the picks that we used to get Brian Robinson Sam Howell and Cole Turner I'm not mad at it at all but overall the sixth round we've been bad I mean, for your long snapper to arguably be the best player, at the very least the most consistent player that we've taken in the sixth round since 2015, that's terrible. Again, Chase Roulier is technically the best player at his best when healthy, but he only plays half a season. So whatever grade you were going to give him, you got to cut it in half just like the amount of games he plays a season. So again, sixth round, bad. And then finally to end the video, seventh round. Going back to 2015, we took Austin Ryder, which... I mean, as a seventh round pick, you can't be too mad. Then 2016, Steven Daniels and Keith Marshall. Again, can't be too upset, but none of them really panned out. Josh Harvey Clemens in 2017 was interesting. He had some talent, but it didn't ultimately work out. And also Joshua Holsey. Then in 2018, Greg Stroman, which was, you know, interesting. We had some fun moments with him. And Trey Quinn, the training camp hero that season, ultimately didn't work out, but interesting. 2019, Jimmy Moreland, the people's champ. I mean, technically for a seventh round pick, you can't be mad there. If anything, I would kind of give that a positive grade, but it ultimately didn't work out as well as we thought it would be. And also, don't forget Jordan Brailford in that same draft. Didn't work out either, but there was some talent there. I can't be mad. And then 2020, whoo, we killed that seventh round. That's our best seventh round probably ever of life because Cameron Curl and James Smith Williams. Now, of course, you're a James Smith Williams. You're kind of unimpressed. You yawn a little bit. But remember, James Smith Williams is our starting defensive event until chase young got back healthy for the majority of last season do not forget that and of course he wasn't a pro bowler but he didn't necessarily make it seem like oh man this defense is terrible because chase young is hurt so starting edge rusher in the nfl level on a top 10 defense arguably top five defense until chase young got back and cameron curl should be a pro bowler in the seventh round we killed it in 2020 man and then 2021 i mean shaka tony i love his talent i feel like we underutilize him and of course he suspended for an entire year so if i would have done this a couple of weeks ago i would have probably gave him a positive grade but now that he's suspended for a year you know i can't necessarily grade this positively he's probably gonna end up getting cut i'm surprised we haven't cut him yet and then dax milne in the seventh round is pretty decent he's our starting punt returner right now and can contribute as a slot receiver occasionally if we need him to so that's a pretty big steal right there i'm not gonna lie that's good and then this most recent draft 2022 we potentially have our starting left guard at least the guy that's going to compete for the starting left guard spot and Chris Paul and then Christian Holmes was terrible for quite a bit of the season but he looks like he's learning but Chris Paul potentially a starting left guard in the final round of the draft I'm gonna definitely go good with the seventh round I want to lean towards great mostly because of camera curl and I really believe in the potential of Chris Paul and then Dax Milne is a starting punt returner we've gotten starters in the seventh round but it's more so been the most recent couple of years in the seventh round everything else before that never really worked out but these past three years in the seventh round uh, we've been going a little stupid I ain't gonna lie but I'm gonna still go good now but just a review first round mixed second round bad third round great fourth round bad fifth round good sixth round bad seventh round good if i had to rank them obviously third round number one again seventh round which i'm almost leaning to great but i'm still gonna give it a good because i feel like it's not in the same tier as the third round which is just insane i'm gonna have to make that second third round first seventh round second best and then the fifth round the third and then after that we can really just debate i mean of course first round 
mix that would apparently go forth and then we have three more bad you can really mix that up however you want but i know for a fact our four best rounds so far have been in order the third round then the seventh then the fifth and then the first again calculating and grading on a curve because in a first round the player has higher expectations and it's supposed to be better than the guy that you get in the seventh round that's why it's mixed even though we have gotten some great players in the first round we should be getting better out of the first round than we're getting that's why i grade on the curve but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video please leave a like on this video if you liked it if you learned anything and as always man i appreciate all the support man shout out to all of my sponsors especially my pro bowl spots whose name you see scrolling the screen right now please let me know how you would grade all of our rounds please let me know how you would grade these rounds because it's actually pretty insane this is really chaotic when you really break it down i forgot about some of these names so this is a really fun exercise again let me know how you would grade these rounds do you agree with my grades am i too low on some am i too high on some let me know and i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out